Hello everybody, it's been a while since I, uh, since I recorded a video, so today I want to talk about nuclear waste. Um, it's been a thorn in my side for uh, ages now, it's been a thorn in everybody's side for ages now, but for all the wrong reasons, and um, I found this blog which was... Uh, published somewhere I'm not going to tell you where because I'm going to anonymize it because I don't want people to pile on this person for writing this or whatever because I think it's 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 a good piece it's a good piece and um, I I share the sentiment but I'm not you know I don't I'm not um, I don't think that the solution or the way forward in this regard is correct. Um, so you know, let me let me just kick this off. I'm going to write each passage and then I'm going to comment. So big problems demand big solutions. In the past decade, youth all over the world are speaking up about issues that affect them now and in the future. Topics such as food scarcity, energy poverty, climate change and global prosperity have been brought back to the limelight. As a Gen Z student currently in graduate school at X, I have always been extremely passionate about the concept of social responsibility. And I absolutely agree. Um, so here, here's the thing. Uh, the way I view social responsibility is to leave the world a better place than I found it. I have two children. They might have children in the future, I don't know. Um, and I want them to inherit a world that is better. Um, that, ha you know, and at this moment we are failing at that. Um, we are not leaving this place a better place than we found it. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, I don't, I don't, I agree. I'm almost 40 years old now. Uh, I think that I've, uh, you know, had a good run <laughs> so far. I hope that to live beyond 80 and see, uh, you know, uh, come our uh, and and see our um, work come to fruition, so that we, you know, can see that we have built a better world. So let's let's move on. Uh, in my fight to speak up for my generation. I'm interested in meeting humanity's responsibility to dispose of nuclear waste. Previous generations have been working towards a nuclear waste solution. We have been working towards a nuclear waste solution their entire lives, and I want my generation to be the first to actually complete the fuel cycle. That's absolutely spot on. Uh, completing the fuel cycle. Um, can mean a lot of things. It can mean that you use nuclear fuel only once and then basically pour it into something or tuck it away something very, very far away where, you know, no human can can uh, accidentally reach it or anything. So it's a little bit ambiguous. Um, I think that closing the fuel cycle should involve, always should involve, uh, recycling all the actinides. Every possible uranium atom that could be fissioned should be fissioned. Every possible plutonium atom that could be fissioned should be fissioned. Now I know this is a this is a tall order, um, but I think that it is good stewardship to. Uh, you know, improve efficiency as high as possible. So let's see the next paragraph. The longer we wait to address nuclear waste, the more problematic it becomes for future generations. Now, I don't understand why that's there because that's not true. Um, because it's not problematic now and it will become less problematic, you know, the longer we wait because more and more isotopes will decay and, uh, you know, leave us with less radiation to contend with. Also, um, handling radioactive waste is something we do 
uh, all over the world. Yes, we keep it not in permanent storage, but in intermediate storage facilities. In the Netherlands, for instance, we have Kovra, which uh, translates into the central repository for nuclear waste. I've already opted to rebrand that place into the central repository for lightly spent nuclear fuel. Um, but so far, these people regard the UF-6, which they got back from the enrichment facility, um, and the spent nuclear fuel as waste, which they want to store deep, deep, deep into the ground somewhere. Which is not closing the fuel cycle, if 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 you ask me. I think that's premature. We're being we we are being too premature here. Um, big problems demand big solutions. Big problems demand big solutions now. And you know it is important to handle nuclear waste extremely safely. And this is this is where I just flat out disagree uh, it's just about the framing of the problem first of all um, we keep nuclear waste I, I mean the, po the point is it's not an extreme it's not an extremely dangerous problem so you don't have to do it extremely safe and we are already doing it extremely safe um, you know, I, I like excellence. I think that doing stuff excellently is is cool. But to 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 say, trust us, we are going to do it safely, and we are going to do it extremely safely, also implies that there is some uh, kind of extreme danger. So I think that the messaging here needs to be toned down a little. Um, let's see. Um, much like we would handle any potential harmful material, all participants in the use of nuclear technology for defense, energy, and medicine share in this responsibility to dispose of the waste. Yeah, and I would like to, I would like to make the first responsibility to keep the waste and look for ways to reuse it. And after you have reused it to its fullest extent, then you have to consider sequestering it somewhere. But the point is, if you suppose that you fission all the uranium in the world, so now you're left with fission products, right? So a portion of it will be long-lived cesium, a portion of it will be iodine, a portion of it will be strontium-90. Those are the three things that we worry the most about now. Once you have fissioned it all, means that you have it in a different state. Maybe uh, it's in a chloride salt, or it's, it's in a fluoride salt, or some other way. Um, you know, isolating these three um, atoms and their isotopes shouldn't be too different difficult because you know there's multiple chemical steps that you can undertake to extract either cesium, strontium, or iodine in one way or another. And once you have it isolated, you can indeed um, perhaps vitrify it, put it in some kind of a steel canister, and shoot it down a pipe somewhere and store it there for, you know, a maximum of 300 years, um, which is not really a problem for the next generations because once you've zoomed it, into the earth it's gone but but also volume wise it's it's very little and it it doesn't want to go anywhere once you basically vitrify it and store it somewhere so so yes i agree we should all take responsibility for our own waste streams but i would be, i would like to err on the side of caution to 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 wait with branding something waste before you have actually utilized it effectively. Um, since the advent of the nuclear energy industry and the expansion of nuclear power across the world, nuclear waste has been accumulating internationally. Historically, it was decided to think about nuclear waste solutions at a later date. Well, the later date is now. Yet the majority of the world has no solution in 2018. So, 
here's the thing. We do have the solutions. I mean, we know what we can do with it. But the point is, we're talking about practical solutions here. This person who is writing writing this 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 article um, basically implies that we have a problem with it right now, and the only problem that we have right now is that people are kicking the can down the road because there's ways we can store it and we do it effortlessly. So that problem has been solved. And the next problem is, when are we going to recycle it? Now, that problem has not yet been solved. There are people who are designing reactors that can reuse this stuff. People are going to say, oh, yeah, there's the BN800, for instance. I don't know if that counts. Um, I would like a more in-situ process where the, the fissioning and the breeding happens in situ in the reactor itself, which implies a molten salt reactor, for instance. Um, but yeah, so if you look at the high-level waste volume here, it says 22,000 cubic meters. Um, I mean, a football field is like 50, 50 is like 5,000 cubic meters. Um, if you stack it one meter high, so that means that it's basically four meters high. It's a football field, four meters high. That's all the high-level waste that there is at the planet right now. And then there is the very low-level waste, the low-level waste, and the intermediate-level waste, which is just reuse it. If it's concrete, reuse it. If it's steel, reuse it somehow. I mean, there's ways we can do that. Uh, currently, not a single metric ton of high-level waste have, has been disposed of. No, that's correct, and I'm glad that we haven't yet, because we would be throwing away loads and loads of money. Um, it is an international consensus that high-level waste... It is an international consensus that high-level waste be disposed of in underground repositories, but not a single repository is operating. Well, I think that the consensus in this case is wrong. It's not an uh, it's not a scientific consensus, by the way. There's uh, it's 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 a it's a political consensus, and I believe that um, it's wrong. I think this consensus is wrong. I think that yes, we need to store waste in underground, but only. Once it's no longer high-level waste, which means that the actinides are gone. I want to use all the actinides. Although Finland is poised to be the first country to do so with its Onkalo repository, the world needs more than just a handful of countries doing so. I agree. Um, I think that each country or, you know, uh, we can have a group of countries, uh, you know, sharing one repository. Why not? I mean, if it's, you know, if it's only fission products we're talking about, I have no problem with that. It's common for nuclear advocates to comment that all of the U.S. commercial waste could fit on a football field at a depth of less than 10 yards. While true, that waste is not, is still not disposed of in any permanent fashion, regardless where you stand in nuclear power, nuclear waste needs to be disposed of. And this is, again... This is hammering down on the issue. Um, this is the I I really get to get the feeling strongly get the feeling from this that it is the we have to store everything stuff we we have to store the spent nuclear fuel and the spent nuclear fuel is regarded as high level waste, which most of the countries do at this moment, which is a serious which conveys a serious misunderstanding of spent nuclear fuel and what we can do with it and and how much worth it still represents it's just throwing away money it's time to bring everybody everyone to the table and have a discussion about how we want to move forward for our generation and those after us it's time to stop stonewalling those we don't agree with and work together. It's time to listen to everyone's concerns and work with each other. Sure, I'm not going to, you know, disagree with that. I am tired of waiting for a solution that isn't implemented. With 2020 here, society demands clear solutions to our problems and the foresight to f solve future ones. And, 
And that's where my uh, my latest work comes in. It's not the fast spectrum reactors. <laughs> this is actually the the solution, but I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting Bruce Lee either. I was expecting this thing here that I uh, made recently. So what you see here is uh, two uh, schematic uh, two schematics. The first schematic, the top one. It's basically the way the Dutch consume nuclear energy today and what we do, you know, with our spent nuclear fuel. So we have one power reactor in Bosselen, which is a 500 megawatt reactor. Um, it produces spent nuclear fuel. In this spent nuclear fuel, there is plutonium. So the, the, the spent nuclear fuel gets sent to La Hague, which is in France. And there they extract the plutonium and they mix the plutonium in with other fuel. And that's the moment when you get MOX, mixed oxide fuel. And this MOX then gets transported back to Bosle to be reused in our own reactor, as far as I know. And don't quote me on that, but I believe that's the way we handle it. Now... The problem is, as you can see, it's 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 fairly simple. I, I, I always say these people do good work. They do excellent work. But the thinking behind this is archaic. This is exactly the kind of thinking that leads up to the kind of articles that have been written that I just read for you and, you know, criticized. So... And this is a little bit of a pie in the sky stuff, so you know people can say, "Well, this is exactly what she what she means." There's no solutions. There are no solutions. We are not implementing solutions right now. Well, that's because the thinking is still okay, archaic. And within this line of thinking, the top schematic, it is indeed paramount that you create a repository because basically there is no end accountability there. So what I propose is uh, we turn Covra not into a final repository, but into a, tempor a temporary storage. And we, we, what we do is the following. We create a more holistic system in which we use light water reactors and preferably fast spectrum molten salt reactors that can utilize the spent nuclear fuel. During this operation, the only thing we get we take out of the system is fission products. We only get out the fission products, and we we what we do is we try to separate them, extract whatever is valuable and can be used in other you know industries or medicine or defense or whatever. And one, once we have extracted those valuables, we use them. And the other fission products get into this final storage, which is underground. And once the, the fission products that have been used in the medical sector or whatever, they also get the same treatment and get put into the ground. But what we, what we do with this second... Uh, schematic here is is much more holistic than what we do in the first one because now we are not only producing electricity we are also producing desalinated water we are also producing district heating process heat and as you can see there is these uh, these these dotted lines these are indirect benefits for the end user so it goes to industry we are making synthetic fuels with the heat that we are that we are producing in the MSR, for instance. Now, it's entirely possible that a molten salt reactor doesn't produce any electricity at all. So that's why the process heat uh, line is there. I mean, if it doesn't produce any electricity at all, that means that you don't have to buy an expensive steam generator. Um, it you just you just put out the heat. The heat gets then used for whatever purpose you want to use it. And, and all you get out of this molten salt reactor is fission products and heat. And in the end, obviously, you have to decommission the MSR and everything. 
<clears throat> that is something that we need to do correctly as well. But I think that this is a much more wholesome approach towards nuclear energy than the archaic, we have a fuel cycle which begins in the mine, ends up in the nuclear reactor, then we get spent nuclear fuel, that's our high-level waste, and we have to dispose of it somehow. Because I don't think that's good stewardship. If we're talking about taking responsibility, I think my way is the way to go. Yes, we still need deep geologic repositories for some of the fission products, mainly cesium, iodine, and strontium. But once those gamma emitters are gone, the problem... <coughs> <coughs> But once those gamma emitters are gone, the problem becomes much, 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 much more simpler. Um, you could basically dilute fission products in such a way that you can use them in concrete or, you know, uh, put them in roads or whatever. Um, just encase them in something that lasts for a long time. I mean, most fission products are gone within within 50 years or so. So use it in something that lasts for at least twice that long and you will never ever have a problem with that again. Uh, maybe that's too simplistic. Maybe maybe there's some stuff in there that you don't want. Uh, maybe you, you get some stable arsenic or some stable mercury out of there. I don't know. I don't know the decay change exactly, but it's possible that there's that you get some a pocket of stuff that you don't want. Um, so basically, I would err on this side of I would err on the side of caution and just put all the fission products in the end into the ground and uh, yeah, render it inert as much as possible. And it, it will be a problem. The cesium, the radio cesium, will be a problem for or a problem will be something to look at for maximum of three hundred years, and the rest it's is gone before that. You know. That, that happens so yeah that's all I, I i i got this 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 article and i just wanted to do i, I just wanted to respond to it because i think that this is not a, a problem that we need to solve right now but it's a problem that we have to work on right now and if we find and solutions are not necessarily something that we and solutions <clears throat> and I don't think that it that sticking something valuable into the ground is the solution. I think that uh, once it has been used, you stick it in the ground is the solution. But before you can do that, you need to do loads and loads and loads and loads more stuff with the with the fission products. So yeah, there's that. Thank you all for watching. Have a nice day. Bye bye.